180. Golf's number one player in the world, Scotty Scheffler, is back on top again after clinching his second green jacket at the Masters yesterday. Scheffler finished the tournament 11 under par. Scheffler credits the birdie he had on hole number 8 to be the momentum he needed to seal the victory and do something that only a few golfers have been able to do before. I would say the, the best momentum turner that I had today was the birdie putt on 8. It was a challenging read because it turned early and it was really straight at the end. Um, so it was a putt that you really had to start on line and um, you know, hope it held its line. And you know, it kind of gave me some good momentum and I used that to, to birdie 9 and 10 and you know, keep pushing because I knew, I knew there was birdies out there on the back nine. I had a lot of really talented players trying to chase me down and um, I knew pars weren't, weren't going to get it done. It's 82 degrees at 12 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 10XL is presented by Vara and Vara, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Now, get ready to spend the next two hours with our three sports loving ladies. Mia O'Brien, Lauren Brooks, and Taylor Dahl. Hey, hey. This is Helmets and Heels on 1010XL. Switched on by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor. Show me what you got, bird lady. Welcome to Helmets and Heels as we follow the first shows live here at the Coastal Equipment Guggen Open at Hidden Hills. Taylor Dahl, Mia O'Brien, all in the fold. RJ Saunders back at 10 XL headquarters. I'm Lauren Brooks. Well, ladies, everyone else is playing golf. We have to talk <laughs> sports. What a tough job wow. we have. I was out there on the course getting some uh, of our wonderful videos and social that you will find on the 1010 XL video channels. And I had more than one of our coworkers and various friends of 1010 come up to me and be like, aren't you playing? And I was like, well, I do have a show to do at 12 o'clock yeah, in the right middle in of the, middle the first of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so unfortunately, no, not able to golf, but you couldn't ask for better weather. It is starting to warm up a little bit. I know I saw nineties this weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, we, we felt it a little bit out here at Hidden Hills Golf Club, which thanks again to our, our hosts who do such a great job here at H Hidden Hills and getting the course ready for the Guggen Open each year. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's here, it's warm. And, uh, I'm not going to lie, ladies. I was a little worried that there was something wrong with me, but then I'm driving around on the golf cart with Graham Marsh, and he's sneezing too. The, the allergy season, it's back. But, hey, if it means good weather, we will take yeah. it. You're talking to the allergy queen here. I, I, but it was the guy over there, he was – kind of taking, I guess, mowing the lawn, doing something over there with groundskeeping, and he was sneezing on his thing, driving <laughs> around, and I was like, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, certainly pollen means that uh, yeah, allergies kick up, but we will take the sunshine for sure. Definitely. I feel like we've always had, knock on wood, good weather for the Guggen, so certainly hope everyone's having a blast out there as we are going to here. So Saturday, speaking of good weather, drove down to Gainesville, high was 76 degrees, uh, so another gorgeous day there. Got to watch the Orange and Blue game. Used to be called the Orange and Blue debut. I don't know why they ever went away from that because Orange mm -hmm. and Blue debut sounds way cooler than Orange and Blue game. Mm -hmm. Then we went over to the baseball park, the Condren uh, ballpark, and it was just a fabulous day. And uh, so we will talk to Nick De La Torre in the 1 o'clock hour at one thirty and talk to him about the – the game, as far as the overall takes he got, what Billy Napier said, all that kind of fun stuff. I'll share some of my thoughts as well. But we're going to kick off the show talking about the Masters. There wasn't much drama, mm -hmm. which I didn't need because the course is so gorgeous. And Scotty Shuffler, for me, is a likable guy. And it wasn't a live guy. I was rooting so hard against Bryson DeChambeau. You have no idea. And so, for me, it was a fabulous tournament. I tweeted it out because... I went a little viral, I guess, right after the Players' Championship on XL Primetime with my comments surrounding does Scotty Scheffler move the needle after becoming the first back-to-back -back Players' Champion because it truly does feel, and I talked to Mark Carnival yesterday on the phone about it, like of PJ Tour Live, our good friend of the program, and, you know, I said to him, that I was right when I said last week, it's like UConn in men's college basketball. It's like South Carolina in women's college basketball, albeit with a few exceptions in that tournament. Yeah. It is Scotty Scheffler – against the field, and it has been that way for the better part of the last year, especially the last three months. And do you find that entertaining enough or not? Because if we go back to the 90s and the early 2000s, when it was Tiger versus the field, everyone was tuned in. Can you actually generate interest when the outcome is already known? And I will tell you that despite the fact that Scotty Scheffler was up four strokes with, what, three holes to play, and I had some other things I should probably be doing around the house, yeah. I couldn't stop watching. And that was the moment I said to that argument, to that previous clip, I dug it up and I said, you know what? 
maybe he is moving the needle. And part of it was because I was rooting for him to get the call that his wife was in labor because I just mostly wanted to see if he could finish the round quickly. Would he sprint off the course? Would mm-hmm. it be dramatic? Would she, uh, she was not at Augusta, but I was hoping she would be. And then, like, not trying to root for this, Meredith. I don't want to. For, I don't want to wish pain upon you, but, like, if her water breaks on 18 green as they're celebrating, yeah. what happens, you know? Like, I was rooting for that chaos. And, but, by the way, she's not due until the end of the month. Right. So, she still has a couple weeks. So, yeah, yeah. my friend yesterday who we were watching with who had a baby less than a year ago was like, she's it's her first kid. She is not going early. Everyone can relax. Like, but I was like, but that's the thing. is like I was rooting for the chaos just because I thought the content would be great. Yeah. But I was watching solely for him because at this point in time, you know, it is like Tiger. It is like Caitlin Clark, where you are just saying, my God, like, we have never seen something like this outside of perhaps Tiger Woods on a golf course, where mm-hmm. it is just so entertaining. You know it's coming, but you can't look away. And for me, Taylor, we already had villains in this. Mm-hmm. That, to me, villains in sports or rivalries in sports, especially when there are villains involved, yeah. that's what heightens it, and that's what brings in those casual fans. Definitely. We already have villains in golf because mm-hmm. we have the live guys, at mm-hmm. least if you're looking at it from my perspective. And so to me – People want to classify Scotty Scheffler as boring, and I can understand that argument. But it's funny and ironic to me because we complain when athletes are doing bat flips or they're yeah. they're doing gestures at other players in or the game. Or when they're doing things off the field. Right, or off or, the and course. so it's like we don't like it when they're when they have too, too much, much personality, yeah. but we don't like it when well, they're quote no unquote boring and yeah. they don't have enough of a personality. Like nobody can ever be satisfied. But in the end, to me, the Masters, I think just was another reason to watch was Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, and I think to me, even going back to Thursday, Friday, because you did have the drama of people being dramatic. You were having golf clubs being thrown, and you were having people getting genuinely frustrated because they couldn't make it. So was it was so, so windy. windy. Yeah, exactly. And I loved I thought it was fantastic because I relate to that, first of all. I'm a terrible golfer, and I've <laughs> joked on here about even my putt-putt game being, ser- uh, being terrible. And so that's how I feel when I'm even putt-putting, when it hops over a rock and goes in that water. And I was like, man, they're feeling my pain right now. You're going to be like Terrell <laughs> Hatton. You're going to pick up your ball and throw it <laughs> throw in the water. Yeah. Um, so you had that. Like, you had the little bit of drama in the beginning. There was a slight second that you felt like Aubert may have been making a little bit, getting a little closer to Scheffler. And that was at least you had that moment where you're like, okay, there's this young guy that is actually, like, making a name for himself and coming into the tour and becoming, when I joked about learning his name at the Players' Championship in seven different formats, and now you're talking about him week to week. So those things are fun to me. And as much as it's not maybe that last day coming down to the final hole or a playoff or whatever it may be, you still have things throughout this. And then, yes, of course, the people with the with Live Golf now and the people who do not like Live Golf and, you know, like you said, villains to a lot of people when it comes to the golf world, they you had that to where aside from DeChambeau, there's a few other guys in that in that top 12, 15, but a lot of them were terrible. DJ, yes. terrible. Uh, I, the master, the update, I think it was, it might have been on Friday. Uh, one of the Masters updates that plays on our station was like, uh, and DJ Dustin Johnson's preparing to go hang out with Paulina this weekend because he's <laughs> 13 over. And I was like, just things like that. That, to me, adds all of these other elements. Even if you're not looking at the top three, four players, there's a whole leaderboard that you can look at. And what's great to me, Mia, we are eight minutes into our first segment. And, yes, you've referenced Tiger Woods, but you did not reference him as far as this tournament is concerned. I think the PGA Tour is thriving even without Tiger. Yes, he played. He made the cut. That was great. He has a record now for made cut, cuts at the Masters. But no, I and yes, all eyes. Which, are by the way, making Tiger. the cut for Tiger is huge. Was huge. Yeah. And like, yes, you can. He certainly, fell apart on Saturday. Right. You could talk about how he fell apart on Saturday, but for him to put two great rounds together back to back, that is progress for a guy who you know how many months ago could barely walk eighteen. And especially when his big, even once he was able to play a little bit after that day one, that recovery time was his biggest thing. And yeah. So now it looks forty five like, minutes. Get back out there. <laughs> yeah. And so now, yes, you have that day two where you're still seeing him compete. You're seeing him make the cut, and maybe there's still – you so there, there's progress there rather than just being like, okay, Tiger's done, there's no chance. You saw something, and for the Tiger fans, that's fantastic. Yes, and maybe one day he'll be able to compete again, or maybe he decides that his – and we all know his peak years are behind him. Maybe he decides he wants to do something else. Mm-hmm. We shall see. He's such a competitive guy that I feel like it had to hurt his soul uh, yeah. to come in at anything over par, right? Yeah. Uh, especially at Augusta when he has played there so well and, and won so many times. But I think at the end of the day, we are talking way more about Scheffler. And I asked Mark, you referenced Mark Mia. I asked him last week about 
does the Tiger factor reduce the pressure on Scotty as far as leading up to the tournament? It seemed like more people were talking about the fact that Tiger was going to play than Scotty could win his second Masters and, and coming off of a back-to-back -back players win. I feel like that conversation probably ended up helping him just a little bit because he was able to kind of relax. Yes, so with the baby on the way, but he was able to relax. A I bit. think that if you talk to anybody who watched the early part of Saturday's coverage, they would tell you that Tiger could have hit the ball in the water on three straight holes, and Jim Nance would have said, and that's a record for number of ripples <laughs> set. Um, because, yes, there obviously is always going to be a fixation on Tiger because the belief from the inside baseball, behind-the-scenes media perspective is if we just show Tiger – people will want to watch Tiger. Mm. And I think you are getting to a point now where people say, and I'm seeing it from some of you on the text line as I'm a lifetime enclosures, that you don't need to see Tiger. Like, you just want to see the golf. Yeah. And whether it's to watch guys just completely implode or it is to watch elite golf like Scotty Scheffler, who, by the way, you couldn't help on that back nine on Sunday but say, as everyone else around him was seemingly falling apart, with the exception maybe of Ludwig Uberg, who was able to fall apart and come back, Scotty was Mr. Consistent akin to Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th that's, that's where it's, it's fascinating to see, Lauren, because I just hope golf doesn't take a turn akin to Major League Baseball, where you have the opportunity now to capitalize and market a Scotty Scheffler. I understand he's the type of guy where, you know, like he was even asked, like, does winning this tournament previously help you? And he goes, no. I just got to go out there and play. It's a new day. Like, it's that's like, I understand that that's not necessarily as sexy in marketing terms, but that's the truth. But at the same time, this guy is as dialed in as any player as yeah. we've seen e since Tiger. And so, like, market that. Don't be like Major League Baseball where you have these personalities, yeah. you have this opportunity to market it, and you're choosing not to. Yeah. yeah. Taylor, to me, what was stunning is he wins the players after dealing with severe neck pain mm -hmm. to start the tournament. This time he wins with all eyes on him other than maybe Tiger. Yeah. And also his wife being pregnant and, and there are a lot of, there's a lot of talk about that. Does he reduce the amount of golf he plays moving forward? I mean, right now all that's all we want to talk about, but mm -hmm. he even said, you know, now golf is not his focus. Is he one of those guys that cares way more about being a family man? Do we eventually stop talking about Scotty Shuffler playing in or winning, I should say, all these majors because he's finally just going to like, he's is like, he just like, I've got, fun. <laughs> yeah, I've got a ton of money. I mean, I know that's not what most people think, yeah. but you have to wonder because he is so different than any other golfer. Yeah. And obviously I don't have the answer to that question of what he's thinking, but it, it is a, a valid question. And I think when it comes to Scheffler, there's just moments too, we're watching him over the weekend where you're just like, you don't even see any ounce of where you felt like things could were about to go bad. Which like, he, we, have, we so don't smooth. feel that. Like, no. When was yeah. the last time you felt that about a golfer? Yeah. It, yeah. I, it's that wiggle that he does. Yeah. That gets all of his <laughs> nerves out. Yeah, it gets it out, and then he's good to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, and it's just like there were so many moments this weekend where I'm like, he is not even flinching at any of these moments. And like I said, even when Ludwig was getting a little closer, he – he goes up two shots right away. And it's just like simple, no problem, move on. And with all of this pressure of and he, going back to player championship, he had just come off another event win. So he won back-to-back -back events in that, then wins the players, dealing with having to get massaged in between each of his, each hole. And then he comes and wins the Masters for back-to-back -back times. It's it's incredible. And I think, to me, guys, another storyline, too, that kind of pops out in a in the opposite light is I feel so bad for Rory. He just, like, yeah. gets here. And he is allowing that idea of the outside pressure. Yeah. The, like, I mean, everyone's talking about Tiger, but Rory's still thinking about, mm -hmm. I, I need to c complete the career Grand Slam. I've never won. And maybe he just needs to get, I don't know how, but get that out of your head and just play like you can. I know in 2022, he was T-second, so that was the closest. But even that, that leaderboard, I think someone ended up winning by like four or five shots. So that was the closest he had in that moment, and it was still like out of arms, out of arms reach. Yeah, I don't know if I feel bad for him. That's interesting. I think because once somebody has won a ton, and I understand, like you said, he's chasing the career grand slam, but he's been so successful. So I don't necessarily feel as bad for him, but I do understand how badly he wants to win. And so therefore, yes, he puts way too much pressure on himself and doesn't play well, uh, seemingly at Augusta. There are other guys too, though, that would be in the same category, Taylor, as mm -hmm. far as like a Jordan Spieth, who yeah. was so successful for their two to three year period and now is not playing nearly as well. Justin Thomas, another mm. guy, used to be – we thought – you know, we always talk about these guys, who can be the next Tiger. I'm so sick of that conversation because there is never going to be, be another Tiger. Yeah, yeah. So let's just talk about them in the moment. But those guys certainly are, are guys that you thought uh, – 
would play well. By the way, Taylor, how did uh, Brooks Kepka finish up? What was his? He ended up being terrible, <laughs> which is fine because if I gave my jinx to him over Victor, Victor I'm good for that. But Victor, didn't dude, I was just gonna say, don't even get me started about <laughs> our good friend Victor because he started great. I was like, okay, this is it. That's what I needed to do is not pick him. <laughs> and and listen, I, I feel bad that I picked him. Did I jinx him with my my bookie picks that, oh, I, right. that I picked Hovland? Because here's the thing, I Quite picked possibly Vic, I picked Victor Hovland because I'm like, okay, it's the Masters. Like, yes, you need to be able to drive for show, putt for dough. Yeah. I get that. But the iron game is so critical, especially with the way the wind was blo- was blowing. Mm-hmm. And I was on the right track. I just probably should have picked Colin Morikawa instead of Victor <laughs> Hovland. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, before we transition, because yes. I, I want to make sure we do hit some highlights with you, Lauren, since you were in Gaines, Vegas for the spring game on Saturday. I just need to read this text. Okay, go off, for it. Off the text line, design okay. my lifetime enclosures. And all of you driving around, just take a second. The year is 2024. And this was just texted in on the 1010XL text line. After not watching golf for many years, I decided to watch the TPC and the Masters this year. What an amazing waste of time. The top golfers have the mental toughness of George Costanza. (laughs) Needless to say, I don't think I will ever watch golf again. Bring in the WNBA draft tonight, baby. Oh, wow. What a turn. What a turn that was. Plot twist. Yeah, I... Thank you, RJ, back at 1010XL World Headquarters. I, for the record, though, I can't imagine having watched the players in the Masters and not wanting to watch more golf. Like, (laughs) I mean, I'm also somebody that loves attending these. I've never been to the Masters. If someone ever wants to offer me a ticket. I'm not even a golf girl, and I enjoyed both. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have. I don't think you have to watch it as closely as you do other sports too, because mm-hmm. you can kind of glance at the leaderboard if you want. Yeah. Uh, and just keep tabs on that. Which uh, on Saturday, by the way, driving home from Gainesville, my dad was driving, and so my mom and I are in the back seat, and the ability to watch live television while in a moving vehicle, mm-hmm. I will always appreciate. So yeah. I'm able to pull up the Masters and root like heck for Bryson DeChambeau to have his implosion, which he did, and that was fantastic. And so I was just so happy. Uh, You did mention Gainesville. So the way that the spring game was done, you had the orange team, which we ended up sitting, my parents and I ended up sitting like 10 rows from the field. We were right behind where the players' families sit, which was fantastic because we got to not necessarily hear the coaches or the players, but we could see them interact with one another. I got to see Scott Strickland talking to people, especially Florida victorious people. I got to see Todd Golden at one point in time. So that part was really cool. We were, we were really close. So Shout we were out Florida victorious. That's right. Uh, they were, we were behind the orange team, which had DJ Lagway on it. And then the blue team was on the opposite sidelines with Graham Mertz, as far as the quarterbacks are concerned. But, a couple of players jumped off the page, and I'm sure you all saw on Twitter, the running back, Jaden Baugh, everyone mm. was like, the first time he got the ball, everyone's looking at their rosters, whether printed or, or digital, going, wait, who, who is that? Um, okay, yep, Trevor Etienne, bye. We don't necessarily think that you're going to be that wow. missed. Now, that, again, you also are so angry when a player yeah, leaves yeah. for your rival school, especially one that's been winning. So you're already, like, wanting to have a replacement. But really, ball looked fantastic. And again, it's a spring game. Take it for what you will. Uh, But yeah, the headliner, of course, DJ Lagway. He certainly looks the part. Did have one interception, uh, but so did Mertz. And I think Gator Nation is going to be able to understand why Napier is going to start Mertz. Mertz is polished. Mertz knows where to go with the football. He's obviously very accurate. And he already has a relationship with guys like Trey Wilson Mm -hmm. and Aiden Mizell, the freshman, and, and guys like that. So Mertz will be the starter. Will DJ Lagway have a role? Absolutely. And you got to see some of the special skills that he has that certainly Mertz does not, and that is running the football. So you do think there will be packages akin right. to when yes. Cam Newton – yes, I did say it – when Cam <laughs> Newton was in Gainesville yeah. and Tim Tebow was the starting quarterback. Yes. I think I, – who knows, because it's Napier, who knows exactly how – quickly he'll start that whether it's going to be against Miami I don't know because you do have to remember Napier loves Mertz and here's Mm. a guy now with four years of experience all these starts under his belt and Napier knows how incredibly important that first game is against the in-state rival Miami so will we see a bunch of Lagway in that game that I don't know okay but do I think over the course of the season you will see a lot of DJ Lagway yes Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Any other standouts for you? I, I'm, of yeah, course, so the, I'm, of course, thinking of uh, the hometown guy, my guy, 
Grayson, my good friend, Grayson Howard. Yes, Grayson Howard. So uh, as far as defensively, guys that stood out to me, Grayson Pup Howard, certainly. Um, he is physical. He is a sure tackler. That is one thing Florida was not good at last year is tackling. That is one thing I noticed in the spring game. There were some pops on some hits. Okay. And like I said, we were really Great, close. And it was gator on gator, as we like to say, jag on jag. Gator yes, but last gator, year but in the spring game, Florida blitzed a ton, and the defense won. The final score was 10-7. to 7. Right. Mm -hmm. So this time it was technically 17-14. Some people wonder why at practice one team was given, the blue team was given the advantage because they won practice, but nobody got to see that. So don't start the spring game with a 3 nothing lead for a team when yeah, nobody yeah. scored yet, but that's Napier for you and, and his staff. But Asa Turner, the transfer from Washington, the DB, looked fantastic. Mm. Tall, athletic fast. Uh, he's a guy that looks like he brings immediate leadership as well as, as far as watching him closely. So yeah, defensively, I liked those guys. Uh, Cam Jackson at one moment, he's bigger um, and not necessarily in the best way, but uh, he has time, plenty of time before the fall starts to lose a little bit of weight. But at one point in time, he went down with, we didn't know what, exactly what it was, kind of looks like maybe an elbow injury, but he got up, walked off and seemed to be fine and he played more. So everything should be fine there. there to my knowledge, there were not any major injuries, which yeah. is also what you want out of a spring game. Sounded like it. Um, one more for me. And again, Nick De La Tour of On3 is going to join us at tw at one thirty. excuse me, to further break down not only the spring game, but the comments from Billy Napier following Saturday's uh, spring showcase. The offensive line, Lauren. Mm -hmm. we, we know that it was a question mark at times last year, a revolving door at times because of injuries. Did you see enough? And again, I understand it's, it's a glorified practice. Yeah. Did you see enough, though, that you say – they paid attention to those holes in the offseason or banked on development. Yeah, it's that's the one position group that I think it might be the hardest to tell in a spring game. Uh, but I will say I am not going to – say the offensive line is going to be a lot better. I, th I think that's still going to be an area where Florida struggles. Did they pay attention to it? Sure. But they're bringing back a lot of the same guys, like we talked about with right. the Jags. And so I... If they're healthy and, and they develop, yeah. then, then But I did see fine. some good run plays, so you, you do think, all right, well, they blocked certainly well. But again, how good is Florida's defensive front yeah, yeah. So to where the offensive line is getting pushed to? So, but again, that, to me, it's the lines of scrimmage. That's the one bad part about a spring game, because it is not Florida versus another team, yeah. to where it's the hardest to tell. To me, you can watch the quarterbacks, you can watch the skill guys the most, uh, and Florida does not have a backup kicker. If anything happens to oh. Trey Smack, Florida is in serious trouble. Oh, no. He went 3-0, and the backup kicker was either 0-3 or 0-4. I think it was 0-4. So, yeah, hopefully Trey, and again, that's special teams. So stay healthy. But special teams <laughs> for some teams is something that they're proud of, and, and yeah, they can and rely on. on. Yeah. Right, uh, when it comes to Billy Napier's okay, team last year, <laughs> yeah, exactly, for Iowa, I'd which be, I, yeah. I did hear Tony Pauline last week, I forgot to mention this on air, uh, talk about the only punter he would draft, of course, is Iowa's punter. Oh, Tory Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a given. Although I did find out I have a connection now to Jeremy Crenshaw, one of my, my good buddies. Crenshaw. Crenshaw, excuse yes. me. One of my good buddies, former co-workers, apparently. That's Florida's Had no punter. idea oh. because he's adopted that they're cousins. Oh, so there you look go. at that. So crazy fun fun facts Well, here. you can follow his career this season uh, as well as I will. Yeah, punters. Um, I, I, of course, would be remiss if, if we got out of the first segment and I didn't ask about Mark Long's tweet um, from Saturday's spring game, Lauren. It only took five special team snaps in the spring game for the Gators to end up with 10 men on the field. The first oh four gosh. were flawless, though. Yes. Uh, you know what? Five it's snaps, a work Taylor. work in progress. A work in progress. Uh, that's the one thing. Do we thing. have a coach? We have a game change. No, we don't have a game changer analyst. Right. They changed the title. But they do have a special teams they have coach someone, now. Yeah, who's okay. focused on special teams. Yeah. So, it, But, yeah, that will be something everyone watches closely, just like everyone with Miami will watch closely when Mario Cristobal has the opportunity to get into a victory formation, yeah. whether or not he chooses <laughs> to do so. That will always be the running joke. A couple things I want to mention before we bring in our first guest. Uh, and Taylor is super familiar with this guest, Lester Wiltfong, as the Bears pick at nine. So we have been counting down to the draft. We will do that on the other side. But before that, just want to mention the Jaguars players are in the building today. The voluntary offseason program begins. So I guess some Jaguars players are there, the ones that want to be. And Mia, as far as the throwback yeah, tweet that unis. the Jaguars put out, is that going to be an actual throwback uniform? It, it, it better not be a trick right now. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I've seen a couple of you on the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures asking me, and, and you're like, is it real? And I'm like, well, it's from the official account. So, um, I mean, I don't run the official account. I run the 1010XL <laughs> account. So I don't really know what to tell you other than, like, you have to believe it at face value. Uh, I did get some intel this morning that it is legit. Cool. And it is going to be exactly what you all hoped and prayed for. Again, That's I don't amazing. want to – round of applause, but I also don't want to speak too soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I do know that this is in the works. And of course, That's with right. the Jaguars celebrating their 30th anniversary this yeah. upcoming yes. season, knowing that Tom Coughlin will be going into the Pride, you can start connecting some dots as to how this they, may be orchestrated. They come out and it's like the throwback mustard ones. <laughs> <laughs> the bold gold on Thursday Half night. The Those different were multi helmet, dual helmet. I was shocked. You guys wanted a throwback. It's a throwback to 2016. <laughs> I was shocked at how many people bought those mustard oh God, gold so jerseys. Bad. But so either bad. way. All right, when we come back, we will chat with Lester Wiltfong as the Bears pick at nine. Who does he think the Bears will be targeting there? We know who Taylor wants in Real yeah. Madunze. Who does Lester think that is next on Helmets and Heels on 10 to next? on 92.5 FM. Helmets and Heels. From the First Coast Lighting Studios at 1010XL. It's the fastest sport on four wheels. This is what I've been waiting for. This Sunday at Talladega. Brought to you by the Plumbers and Pipefitters Local Union 234. From the station with the most horsepower. 1010XL. Mia here and we've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino canceled because real life came calling my bookies new and improved online casino is here to change the game dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots progressive jackpots and live dealer action all from the comfort of your own home the live casino is so easy to use just go to my bookie and click live casino at the top you'll find live dealers ready to deal or spin just like you're at the casino the MyBookie Casino provides a Las Vegas experience when the action's in the palm of your hands and you don't even need to wear pants. Start at MyBookie today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code 1010XL. A revamped loyalty program ensures a host of exclusive VIP perks. Sign up and hit the casino with promo code 1010XL. The more you play, the more you win, only with MyBookie. This is head coach Matthew Driscoll from the UNF men's basketball team. When our players suffer an orthopedic injury, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist gets our players back on the court pain-free. We appreciate the endorsements from our high school and college coaches. This is Dr. Kevin Murphy. The next time you need orthopedic care, you can rely on our team at Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. At Andy's Automotive and Truck Services, they know that your company's fleet is more than just a bunch of cars and trucks. It's your livelihood, your reputation, your pride. So when you need routine fleet maintenance or emergency repairs, Andy's offers after hours and mobile service to minimize your downtime and keep your fleet running like new. While you care for your employees and customers, rest assured Andy's Automotive will take care of your fleet. Visit the team at andysats.com. Go inside your home team's locker room with Jags beat reporter Hayes Carline. Check out my blog at 1010XL.com. So you can catch all the news and nuggets you need to know. My blog is brought to you by Wolin Reese Plumbing, where quality and experience count. Hold on tight because All Pro Roofing is unleashing some electrifying news. Brace yourselves for instant excitement. Instant roof quotes are here. Simply surf over to their website and hit the instant roof quote tab. Boom. That's your ticket to a lightning fast estimate. Head over to allproofingllc.com. Click that instant roof quote tab. What are you waiting for? Click on the instant roof quote tab today at allproofingllc.com. License number CCC 132706. CDC 060138. As someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away, I'm Susan Cohen, and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein & Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI, domestic violence, and all criminal offenses. In your battle with the justice system, there's only one thing you need to know. Dial David, 24-7 at Epstein & Robbins, 354-5645. 354-5645. Men, suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE, frustrated taking pills that don't work, Here's a message from Prime Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prime Men's Medical Center now. 904-664-8217. That's 904-664-8217. Daily's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. 
To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daly's Dash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daly's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. AC's broke, it ain't no joke, call Florida Home AC, Florida Home AC, Florida Home AC, Florida Home AC, FloridaHomeAC.com. Mia here, looking to spruce up your home or business for the spring? Window Gang's exterior cleaning services will remove stubborn stains, restore windows to a clear shine, and ensure your gutters flow freely. Call 262-7300 for a free estimate. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Ready? In three, two, one. The countdown to the draft is on. I hope you're ready. Who'll be off the board when the Jaguars pick? Let's find out. Uh, what up, y'all? Yeah, soundtrack was popping, baby. Woo! All righty, if you are joining us, you know that sound. We are continuing on our countdown to the Jags pick. That way we can see who may be still on the board for the Jaguars at 17. But there are some rumors that there may be a trade-up and with this particular guest. So we are joined by Lester Wiltfong, Jr., Editor-in-Chief at Windy City Gridiron, also host of T-Formation and Bear and Balanced with Second City Gridiron. Lester, thanks so much for hopping on with us. Anytime. Appreciate it. So let's just uh, – let's hop right into this. We're not doing an exact, hey, give us who you think we're going to select because that would r- r- involve me giving you the whole list of people that have been selected before. But we are kind of just getting an idea of what's in the, the Bears' mindset and which way they're leaning. And um, I could have done this myself, but you are very in-depth in all of this uh-huh. too. So let, let's start that way. A few – let's just – a few ways that you've heard – slash believe the Bears are leaning with that ninth pick? Well, the Bears are heading into the draft right now with a pretty obvious hole at defensive end. You know, that, that seems to be the way that, that a lot of pundits have them have them going. But, you know, the strength of this draft is really in the receivers. So if there's a guy like Roma Dunze sitting there or even um, uh, Malik Neighbors sitting there, you know, I think the Bears have to highly consider taking a receiver there. But if not, you know, I know as from fans' perspective, I know a lot of us want to see the Bears trade back, maybe address that defensive end a little later. Lester, that's the interesting query, um, I, I think, or the interesting conundrum, I should say, that the Bears, I think, find themselves in that I didn't realize, and I don't want to call it a dire situation, because anytime you have two picks in the top ten of the NFL draft, I wouldn't call it a dire situation. But those two picks are two of the four total picks that the Chicago Bears have in the 2024 NFL Draft. And so that's where I think this notion, which uh, is also part of Mia's Mock Draft 3.0, which went live this morning on 1010XL.com, this notion that a team could move up into the top 10 and the Bears would be willing to trade back to get more capital perhaps could be more reality than fantasy. Yes? No? No, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Ryan Poles is, you know, through through his his first two years in the job, he has always moved on the draft board quite a bit. He's acquired a bunch of draft picks. Um, like you said, he only has four this year. So you have to just, just see how, how do they have their board. You hear a lot of people say this is a really top-heavy draft. So maybe he doesn't value those day three picks that, like he would in the past. So if, if he can trade back uh, from nine, pick up an additional second or even a third-round pick, I think that may be the way to go. Lester, are you in the mindset of best player available? Just let's see how the board falls. Or do you think the Bears should go with one of those two positions like you mentioned, whether edge or receiver? Yeah, you know, it's funny, you look at a lot of the mock drafts, and, and there are several that actually have Joe Alt, uh, the, the, the tackle from, from, from uh, Notre Dame, sitting there. And I know the Bears don't have a huge need of left tackle, but, you know, he is such a good prospect. I think if he's there, the Bears have to consider him. And I know, I know uh, uh, GM Ryan Poles has talked about, he's having his team of scouts look at three positions pretty, 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 pretty in depth, you know, tackle, edge, and receiver. So I think all three of those positions are in play. Now, Lester, I, I've been very vocal about Bears taking Roma Dunze at nine, and I think you've talked about it time and time again also. One of the recent, when you can go in and kind of measure what the Bears could get for that ninth pick, one, it looks like 
for the Jags, if the Jags, for example, wanted to trade up, they would give up their 17 and 48 to get Rome and move Jag the Bears down to 17. Is that something that you see as a, as a good fit and something Ryan Poles would do? Yeah, I think that actually makes sense. I mean, if, if you, like I said, if he's going to get a, a second round pick in the deal, I think that's something he has to consider. Um, then at that point, you know, because this is a pretty deep receiver class. I know, I, I, like, like you, I also like Roma Dunes. I think he, he, he's there. He's a no-brainer. But, you know, if, if the Jags want to come up and they want to make that deal and, and they want to sweeten the pot a little bit, maybe give them an, an additional pick in 2025, I think that's the direction they go because now they're looking at, at either a, a later receiver or at that 17 range, it's still possible there's still a quality edge in there. I know Chop Robbins for Penn State, he's, he's predicted to go in that range. So maybe you trade back. Get a guy like Chop Robinson, get your receiver a little in the second round, and then pick up an additional pick. Lester Wiltfong Jr. of Windy City Gridiron is our guest on the All Pro Roofing Hotline as we count down to that all important 17th overall pick that your Jacksonville Jaguars currently own. The Chicago Bears, of course, picking at number nine. Lester, I'm curious, we've gotten Taylor's perspective, but your take. I know you mentioned the possibility of Joe Walt being there at nine with the Bears run to the podium. Olu Fushano could be there. Tylese Fawaga, maybe there's interest there. Many people believe he could be a top 10 pick. What is your evaluation right now of the Bears' offensive line, knowing full well they're bringing in a rookie quarterback and want to put him in the best situation? Yeah, I mean, I think the Bears are content with what they have now. They address center with, uh, with a trade for Ryan Bates. They picked the guy in free from the Rams as well. So I think they're content with what they have at center. I know they like Braxton Jones at left tackle. Um, I, I, I'm a fan of Braxton Jones as well, but I could see the, the if they did want to upgrade there because, like I said, Joe Alt, if he's sitting there at, at nine, you have to consider that because he's just so good, and then you make Braxton Jones your swing guy, maybe kick him into to guard if, if possible. But but I, I think your guards are pretty set. I think they're comfortable with center. Um, right tackle, uh, Darnell Wright, who was a rookie last year, had a really nice rookie year. He's going to have a, a, nice, a nice year coming up, hopefully. So I think they're in a pretty good situation up front, but they still need some more depth. As far as the quarterback is concerned, Mia just mentioned you'll have a rookie quarterback. Taylor had our number one pick. She, of course, picked Caleb Williams. How do you project nice. he'll do, Lester? <laughs> you know, he, he, he looks like the real deal. I mean, I know a lot of Bears fans were really split. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Taylor could tell you that. You know, there are a lot of Justin Fields fans out there, and, and, and rightfully so. He, he did what he could do for the Bears. But it's a unique situation. I mean, teams that are coming off of seven-win seasons, don't normally have the first overall pick and a chance to draft a guy that is, you know, talked about as being one of the better quarterback prospects in years. So I'm expecting a good year from Caleb Williams. Um, he'll have to learn a few things, have to be a little smarter with the football a bit. You know, the, the fumbles were an issue in college, some sacks. But if you look at those, those, those advanced analytics from college, you kind of see why he did what he had to do. So you think you project him into a pretty good team with the Bears who are actually coming up a, a seven-win season. You know, they've upgraded with Keenan Allen at receiver. They already have D.J. Moore. Um, you know, they have a pretty good offense around them. And then a defense should be a top 10 defense. So I'm expecting playoffs. Yeah, I, I feel like it. I'm scared to say it, but same, Lester. I, one interesting guy that a lot of na – as we've done this, now we're at pick nine, and anytime we've mentioned this name, Lester, people are like, he's fantastic, but – can't see him drafting there. He's fantastic, but this, and that's Brock Bowers. Uh, even when yeah. we were talking to Tennessee, Tennessee was kind of like, look, he's great. Like, he could potentially be the next Travis Kelsey, but I don't know if we could take him there. What are your thoughts on Brock and if the, the chances, whether it's at nine or if the Bears trade back a little bit and grab Brock? Yeah, I like Bowers. I think he's a fantastic prospect. You know, the Bears do have Cole Kmet and Gerald Everett. They picked up as a free agent. You know, but Brock Bowers, you know, he's not an inline tight end. He is more of a move guy. So if the Bears do go that route, you'll just see a lot of three receiver sets. You'll kind of see Brock Bowers kind of used as the X receiver in a lot in a, in a lot of sets, and then eventually, you know, he will take over for Gerald Everett, who's on a two year deal. Lester, like we said, as we get ready to wrap up with you on the All Pro Roofing Hotline, we're not going to ask you for a specific pick, but I do want to just kind of run through for you, and then maybe you give me your in the moment what you would do in terms of where we've had our conversations one through eight thus far during this series. The first three picks off the board, of course, for the three quarterbacks. It was interesting hearing from our Cardinals reporter and Johnny Venerable of PHNX because he said he thinks Marvin Harrison Jr. should be the pick, but obviously the potential for the Cardinals to, to trade out. Sounded like the Chargers from Shannon Farron were going to go offensive line. The Giants go wide receiver, Titans offensive line, Falcons would like to trade out, but probably go edge or corner if they can't. 
And so with all that said, if the board was to fall the way I just described, with the ninth overall pick, where do you believe in your heart of hearts the mm-hmm. Chicago Bears go? I would love to see, again, Roma Dunze, he's my guy. But I have a feeling that even if Dunze's there, I got a feeling the Bears will entertain a trade back offer. And I think they'll look to move the pick if they get a nice deal. My heart would break in that situation. I guess, like, if it's Jags, I <laughs> guess Is that because it was Jags. in Mia's mock draft Monday, too? I posted I posted this morning, and I'm like, sorry, Taylor, send. <laughs> if it's yeah. Jags, I guess that's a win for me, too, because I still get to root for Rome here. Um, but, yeah, so, that yeah, I guess uh, that's a lot of ways that people are seeing it going is him trying to get some more draft picks because, like you said, not only do they only have four, Lester, but they also don't pick again until the third round. So there's a long gap there between that yep. number nine pick and when they pick again. So we will see. But, again, Lester, 10 days to the draft, so we have a busy day coming up uh, pretty soon. And thanks for joining us. Anytime. I appreciate it. Our thanks again to Lester Wilfong joining us on the All Pro Roofing Hotline. You can find him at Windy City Gridiron, which that is still the handle, Taylor, but I know there's, been some, yes. there's been some development in yeah. terms of YouTube presence. Yes. yes. So, well, SB Nation has done away with their podcast, so we have pivoted recently. So we already luckily had a YouTube channel anyways, so we're just pivoting to that. So Second City Gridiron is where we are now will solely be after April, but we are still Windy City Gridiron through April. So. Interesting, by the way, Lester, talked about a lot of different players never mentioned Jared verse or mm-hmm. like a Dallas Turner. Cause he started with, there's a need at edge, edge yeah. but, and then he talked about a lot of different players, which it, that leads me to believe that while there's a need at edge, that's probably not where the bears are going to go. And so a lot of people like a lot of bears fans like Jared verse better than Dallas Turner because of the way he'd fit the way Eber Flus likes to run his defense and the fit of him being able to set the edge and him being able to rest, uh, pass the, rush the passer, him being across from Montez Sweat. They like the fit of that, but they don't love it at nine. So okay. that's why a lot of Bears fans trade are back. like, they would love an edge. They don't want to trade back to 17, ideally. Most people okay. more are looking at like 12, 13, maybe the Vikings pick, but the, okay. I know they want to go a little more. But like 12, 13, they're looking at and hopefully, hopefully getting verse there. But people, that's why I think he didn't name it because they are just more so he's a better fit for the Bears, but they don't think he's technically worth that nine. Since I alluded to it and I see some of our friends on the YouTube chat line asking, um, would the Jags move up that far to number nine? I did make that my scenario in Mia's Mock Draft 3.0, which is live on 1010XL.com if you want to read it. It's also on our video channels if you want to watch it. Um, Ran the numbers. Ran the numbers on the NFL trade value chart multiple times over multiple trade value sites. All the Jaguars would have to give up to move from number 17 to number nine overall is that 17th pick and the 48th overall pick. That's it. That's all they would need to move up to number nine and trade with the Chicago Bears. Now, so then you're picking ninth yes. and 96. Correct. Yeah. So you, you do accept that there is an ocean between nine and 96, but if it is one of those three wide receivers – would you be okay with that? Well, then you'd have your Friday night off, I suppose, if you're a yeah. Jaguars well, fan. <laughs> well, you would have number 96. You would have a good draft day. You, would right, have no- you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to pay attention as closely Correct. on Correct. And, and by the way, I may or may not have the Jags trading back into the third round again, so that's yeah. why you really should go check out the, my mock draft this week. But it, I've oh, – oh, go ahead, Taylor. So it's also interesting that I feel like I've seen so many people say no to giving 17 up for Ayuk or uh, – the whatever if we're talking about Jefferson or T Higgins, T Higgins or Ayuk, Ayuk yeah. whatever they've said no to that but a lot are like heck yeah when it comes to a 17 and 48 for Rome who you haven't even seen play in the NFL but I think that's because correct you don't have to pay right away correct the money wouldn't be what it would have to be for Brandon Ayuk you mm-hmm. would be giving up the 17th overall pick and also from what I was told you then wouldn't have a first round pick you would mm-hmm. still have the first round pick and you'd use it on Rome if you get Brandon Ayuk then you don't have a first round pick either yeah um but then you also have to pull the Brinks truck up to also pay him, which I'm sure we'll get into the IU discussion later. But I do want to also note that I ran it as well because I've seen some people mocking the Jags trading up to number eight overall. Similar situation, they would give up the 17th overall pick, the 48th overall pick. They would also have to give up their fifth round pick, which is 153, mm-hmm. to move up to eight with the Atlanta Falcons. So if you're thinking about how much would it take, would we have to tap into future draft capital down the line? Perhaps, at least in my perspective, it's not as much capital as you think. 
Sounds good. We will chat about Brendan Ayuk when we come back. And then around the other side, Matt Moscona will join us at 1 o'clock. We are going to get into Brian Thomas Jr., who's been mocked a lot to the Jaguars. Who Matt, of course, covers Brian at LSU. And uh, we'll also talk about the LSU spring game that happened over the weekend. You are listening to Helmets and Heels on 10 to next Saturday, 2.5 FM, live from the Coastal Equipment Guggen Open. Helmets and Heels is switched on by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor. On 1010XL. Because life is a competition. Ah! There's 1010XL, Shaq Sports Radio. Attention veterans, if you have a VA loan, you need to listen to this, especially if your current rate is higher than 6.5%. Now is the time to take advantage of the federal government's VA Streamline Refinance Program. With my friends at Loan Pronto, you can. Go to LoanPronto.com. Prosser here, and Loan Pronto has fixed rate APRs in the five. You can drop your rate now. Lower your payment with no income documentation and no appraisal. Do it at LoanPronto.com. Their all digital platform makes it easy. They can even cover your closing costs. If you need cash now, Loan Pronto can get you up to 100% of your home value. You can pay off all your credit cards or other debt and save as much as $1,000 a month. Call Loan Pronto now at 904-999-1508 or get a 30-second rate quote at LoanPronto.com. Ask about streamlined VA loans, no income doc, and no appraisal. Loan Pronto, 999-1508 or LoanPronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. Have you been dreaming of enhancing your living space with top-quality custom windows and doors? Well, now's the 30-day spring sale with Renewal by Anderson. Save $300 on every window, $825 on all patio doors. Plus, no money down, no payments, and no interest for 12 months. This offer expires April 30th and restrictions apply. Renewal by Anderson, a better way to a better window. Visit rbafla.com. License number CGC 1527613. Big Brothers Big Sisters is teaming up with the NFL to inspire change. From now to draft day, Big Brothers Big Sisters is following the NFL draft, aiming to recruit potential bigs. Hi, I'm Brent from the 1010 Sales Team. I'm committed as a mentor, and we need you to step up and become a mentor too. There's a waiting list of more than 50 children hoping for a mentor. It's just a few hours a month. Be a mentor. Become a big. Visit bbbsnefl.org. Be a mentor or visit Big Brothers Big Sisters and click on Big Draft. If you're an experienced, skilled plumber or welder that's MedGas certified and you're tired of working for a company that just doesn't treat you right, Local 234 is the place for you. Their pay is the best in the business. You'll walk away with $35.09 an hour in your pocket. With benefits, that's just over $50 an hour. Local 234 has been around since 1901, and that means something. Visit UA234.com to send your resume. Local 234, make the right connection. Are you 18 years or older, just got married, just got divorced, or have children? Listen up. Have you done your last will and estate planning? You have questions? Call Matt Hinson with the Hinson Law Firm. Reach him at 527-1700, offices Jacksonville, Florida. And don't let the state decide your fate. This state in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On April 15, 1947, Jackie Robinson becomes the first African-American to play in U.S. Major League Baseball on the Dodgers. Let's go! Looking for a night of action without a big hit to your bankroll? This Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena, cheer on your Sharks as they go all in against the Las Vegas Nighthawks. See what I did there? With tickets as low as $15, you can't find this kind of family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. Let's go! Decades night. Find that old members-only jacket or favorite flannel shirt. We're celebrating the 90s. What's your favorite decade? Let's go! Don't miss the fun this Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena. For tickets, call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. That's tickets at 904-621-0700. Let's go! Let's go! Let Hodges Mazda find the perfect Mazda SUV just for you. Lauren Brooks here. Transition from city streets to off-road trails in a newly leased 2024 Mazda CX-50 for only $316 a month or lease the stunning five-passenger 2024 Mazda CX-30 for only $298 a month. 
Our professional non-commissioned sales team always puts your best interests first. Plus, every vehicle purchase comes with two years free maintenance. Visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com for the Hodges Mazda difference. See dealer for details, lease, terms, and fees for qualified applicants expires April 30th, 2024. It's back, the biggest jewelry sale of the year. Buy one, get one at Beard's Diamonds. No other jewelry store in North Florida can match it. Buy any band and get the other one free. The whole month of April. Beard's Diamonds will beat any competitor's price. At the St. John's Town Center. Hey, sports fans, it's Ace Carline for Kingfish Pest Control. Are mosquitoes turning your outdoor fun into a full contact sport? Time to call in Kingfish Pest Control. I can tell you from my own experience, they are the MVPs of mosquito elimination. See for yourself. Call Kingfish Pest Control today and get an unbeatable 50% off your first treatment. That's right. Sign up for a full season of lockdown coverage and get 50% off your first treatment. Don't let mosquitoes steal your home field advantage. Reclaim your yard with Kingfish Pest Control. If you've played sports or still lead an active life, chances are joint pain is nothing new. This is Dr. George Barry of Barry Orthopedics, and we like to be your option when it comes to taking care of your body and getting back in the game. From shoulders to elbows to hip and knee pain, Barry Orthopedics can diagnose and treat a variety of injuries that are causing you pain. We are Barry Orthopedics and online at barryorthopedics.com. With more than 30 years of experience, our team is here to care for your entire family. Find out more at barryorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Well, I wonder what it's like to be the rainmaker. Okay, who added Matchbox 20? I Taylor Dahl <laughs> to the playlist. I love it. I haven't heard this song in a while. I, I love Matchbox 20. I'm a, like, major 90s, like, late 90s music girl, like Goo Goo Dolls, Matchbox 20, all those. Like, my childhood revolved around, so these are just very nostalgic for me. Yes, I think you and my cousin Caitlin were born around the same time, mm-hmm. like, possibly even the same year. And uh, I once made a playlist. We were going to the beach, and I made a playlist of all of that, the style of music. And she was like, oh, this my gosh, fantastic. this is just my favorite thing. Yeah, I think we were we were blessed to grow up between, or uh, to be born, I should say, Taylor, between 1990 and 1993, because we got to listen and live through two eras of Rob Thomas, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> in that we got to grow up with Smooth being, like, one of the first songs I remember hearing on radio at, like, six or seven years old mm-hmm. and then realizing oh my god he's in a band too <laughs> and now the band is back too so yeah underrated artist of the 2000s and the 90s i said what i said <laughs> <laughs> there you have it all right so just wanted to go over mia kind of did this with lester but the nfl draft countdown recap basically the first three picks are quarterbacks the cardinals is where we wonder what they're going to do is it marvin harrison jr for this scenario i'll say it is the chargers i'm going to give joe alt to them so there's no trading at this point in time the Giants take Malik Neighbors, so another receiver off the board. Titans, that's where we're not quite sure where, where they're going to go. Best tackle available. Best tackle, maybe edge, but probably best tackle, uh, which if Joe Alt's off the board could be those guys that you mentioned. I did. I, listen, I, as much as we kind of laughed about it, I mean, Shannon Farron's idea of could Harbaugh, like, zig while everyone else zags? Yeah. Does he take Brock Bowers? Does he take J.C. Latham? Latham. Yeah. It like, seems like they really like J.C. Latham. Uh, granted, they're talking about trading back to get J.C. Right, Latham. Right, but. right. But, yeah, so that's another offensive tackle Or even let's say that, like, the Chargers – let's say let's say what uh, Johnny Venerable of PHNX outlined. Like, let's say they do say, you know what, we're taking Marv, and then the Vikings trade up to five, take J.J. McCarthy. So, sure. So, another quarterback off the board – Obviously, where I'm going with this is where what the options the Jaguars will have. That's why mm-hmm. we're doing this. The Falcons, that's the first corner that could be off the board. Falcons, as far as our reporter said, either edge or cornerback, as mm-hmm. far as Miles Garrett, uh, that we had last week. And so, or they could also trade back. There's a lot of trade back yeah. scenarios, certainly, from what we've seen so far. But the first corner, in other words, could be off the board, whether that's Quinion uh, Mitchell or if that's Terry and Arnold. And then the Bears, at this point, we're going to just say Roma Dunze. So mm-hmm. you've had several quarterbacks, several receivers, several tackles off the board. Potentially no edge rushers at this yeah. point. Just depends on how things go. We will certainly see picks 10 through 16, I think, being more offensive line, more corners, yeah. more receivers. But so the question then becomes who, if the Jaguars get the best corner at that point in time, who is that? If mm-hmm. It could be the third corner. The Jaguars may have the fourth 
receiver pick as far as that's concerned, or they may have one of the first couple edges. That's where I think it all boils down to. And, of course, that is assuming that they don't trade up. Yeah. Because, again, we go back to Trent Bulky lives life with no regrets. He doesn't care about the outside noise, even though he has a clown desk that a fan sent him on his desk. Um, I can't help but feel like, you know, because – there's pressure for the Jags to bounce back after a disappointing finish last year, even if some people chalk that up to injuries. I can't help but feel like Trent Baalke feels like he has to prove that, hey, I wasn't lying when I said I just couldn't find a trade partner to trade back up last year. I can trade up. Sure. And I'm not just saying that just because that's this week's mock draft Monday, by the way. Like, I, in my heart of hearts, think whether it is to eight or nine, mm-hmm. or even if it's not for the wide receiver of choice. Let's say that Quinion Mitchell goes at eight, right? and Terry and Arnold could be taken at 13. Would you be okay with trading up to 12 with the Denver Broncos, who, oh, by the way, only have five picks in this NFL draft? They want to accrue more draft capital to go secure your corner opposite Tyson Campbell. Right. All right, so let's get it to Brendan Ayuk. Uh, someone tweets out that he's going to be trade or has asked for a trade. His agent says, uh, not so fast, my friends, basically, in the words of Lee Corso. He says you need different sources. Uh, at the end of the day, I think Ayuk, I think we all three at this point in time think he's playing for the 49ers this coming season. Yeah, he's playing for the 49ers, but also I think all three of us at this table and basically anyone who lives in the city of Jacksonville and lived through the Jalen Ramsey saga knows mm-hmm. this is straight out of the Athletes First playbook, and I say that with love and admiration for that group um, because they just keep doing it, yeah. and people keep falling for it. It. Uh, you unfollow your team. You unfollow yep. your Justin team. Justin Fields are the same thing you inf- two months ago. You inform somebody in the media, so they start talking about it. Then you say, no, no, we're not requesting not. a trade. But then yeah. I can almost guarantee you, and I'm not trying to predict the future or speak for Brandon Ayuk in his camp, but he'll go on a podcast and he'll reference, like, you know, I want to be the highest paid receiver in the league. I believe I am. I'm not sure if San Francisco can do that because we have so many pieces. And then about two months from now, he'll get an extension and he'll say <laughs> he never wants to play anywhere else the rest this has always been my home. Yeah. And that's why, <laughs> so, like, right, like when I reported it, mm-hmm. like, again, like, let's go back in March and kind of the timeline, right? Who represents Calvin Ridley? Athletes first. Mm-hmm. Who represents Brandon Ayuk? Athletes first. Who tweeted out after everything happened with Calvin Ridley that my, I'm all about getting my clients the bag. That's always the focus, them and their families. David Mulligetta, mm-hmm. the head of Athletes First. The next day, all of a sudden, I hear rumblings and multiple people who I trust also hear rumblings that the Jags were told that, you know, would, would you be interested in Brandon Ayuk? And they said, yeah, we would. Like, let, let's kind of, you know, just talk a little bit. Nothing formal, just back and forth. And so this is me connecting dots, but it's also me knowing that there was at the very least a conversation yeah. about it. Would you be interested? That's a silly question. Right. I would <laughs> also on. be interested in a million dollars. <laughs> and so, but the fact that it came to the Jags after the Calvin Ridley deal fell apart says to me that his representation is doing their due diligence. They're mm-hmm. seeing what his market would be. Mm-hmm. They're trying to come up with, hey, you know, San Francisco, if you can't come through with this, we know team X, Y, and Z can. And that's just good business. That's doing right by your client. And it's continued even after I know John Lynch, every 49ers fan on Twitter came for me at the end of March because John Lynch said at the owners' meetings that Brandon Ayuk's not going to be traded. And now he blings up he's going to request a trade. Like, this is from their playbook. This is how they do do it. And mm-hmm. they've done it for like seven years now, and everyone keeps falling for it. Hey, Taylor unfollowed 10 to XL, so I think she's trying to be the, the highest paid heel around here. Wow. Right, when, when we come back, Matt Moscona joins us from Baton Rouge. You are listening to Helmets and Heels on 10 to XL 92.5 FM. From the First Coast Lighting Studios at 10 10 XL, this is Helmets and Heels. Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Maybe the problem is... Your morning attitude adjustment. We're coddling these guys too much. The drill. Yeah. Weekday mornings on 1010XL. Jacksonville's Sports Radio. Prosser here for Lifetime Enclosures and Lifetime Flooring. With the weather starting to turn for the better, look ahead. Get that backyard ready for spring with a new screened-in enclosure. Maximize the space you have and make it great with lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. They truly are best in the business. If you have the space and the idea, give them a call today. Lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. Showroom just off Phillips Highway. Tell them Prosser sent you. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguar. Now that's what I call high quality H2O. If you want high quality water throughout your home, call your local water board. We install equipment to solve any water problem. Waterboyjax.com. 
the flagship station of the Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Mark Watson with Hardball Creative. When getting pens with your company's logo on them, get nice pens. No one wants to steal a pen that doesn't work. Check them out at hardballcreative.com. Hardball Creative. Hardball does it all. This is Hayes Carline for First Florida Credit Union. I bank with First Florida Credit Union because I trust them. I can always count on them when it comes to the vast services they provide. First Florida Credit Union was voted Best Bank in the 2023 Best of Bold City Community Choice Awards, and it's easy to see why. I go to the branch off 210 in St. Johns County and the new Durban location, but they have 10 branches in the Jacksonville area. You need to be banking with First Florida Credit Union. They're enriching people every day. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity lender. Life has its share of challenges, and when it puts you to the test, make sure you reach out to Rebound Rehabilitation to give you the quickest path back to full health and confidence. Rebound Rehab, specializing in helping patients overcome back pain and sciatica, arthritis, and fibromyalgia, just to name a few. Rebound Rehab, locations covering the entire First Coast, getting you back in control with a pain-free life. Sports injury, workplace injury, whatever it might be, you can rebound. Log on to reboundrehab.com for more info. Let's fire up the flavor and ignite those appetites. Let's slow down and smell the barbecue. Because all your favorites are smoked for hours and ready for eating when you are. From our famous ribs to slow smoked pork. Enjoy some perfection by the plateful, safely in our dining room or in the comfort of your home. With curbside pickup, drive through and delivery. Sonny's Barbecue, local pitmasters since 68. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball presented by FIS with tickets starting at just five bucks is back at One to One Financial Ballpark this weekend weekend. Don't miss Coors Light Thirsty Thursday, Fireworks Friday and Saturday, and Military Appreciation on Sunday Family Fun Day. Tickets start at just five bucks. Log on to jackshrimp.com. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball, affordable family fun. Tired of dealing with clogged drains? What about those bad smells coming from your pipes? No matter how big or small your commercial or residential project may be, my friends at DuckDuckRooter can handle it. Contact them today for all your plumbing, septic, and air conditioning needs at 904-862-6769. And while I have your attention, DuckDuckRooter is also hiring plumbers. They offer excellent weekly pay, health insurance, paid holidays, 401k, and more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com and they will call you for an interview. Brian and Angela Wall here with Window World. You've heard us talk about it. Window World, the number one window replacement company in the USA, selling over 1 million windows each year for the past eight years. That's a lot of satisfied customers and why J.D. Powers has awarded Window World best in customer satisfaction three out of four years. Window World stands behind their slogan, simply the best for less. With Window World, you get top quality windows at a price that leaves more of your money in your bank account, and you get the absolute best guarantee there is in the window replacement industry. When compared to our competition, there is none. See for yourself. Call the competition. Get quotes from them. But before you buy, get Window World's free estimate and compare the quality of the windows and the price. You'll see. And when your new Window World windows are installed and they're saving you money on your energy bills, if anything goes wrong with those windows, Window World and I will be there to make it right. That's my guarantee. Call Window World today. Start saving money on your new windows and your energy bills and take vacation with your savings. Window World, online at windowworldneflorida.com. Window Window World, World, simply simply the the best best for less. less. Thank you for your business. Window World also offers energy-efficient doors and siding. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. Brought to you by Jacksonville Hearing and Balance Institute. The Gators dropped the weekend series to the South Carolina Gamecocks after losing both Friday and Saturday. The Gators, however, were able to salvage the weekend and gain some momentum with an 11-9 victory on Sunday, snapping a six-game losing streak. Head coach Kevin O'Sullivan spoke on the victory Sunday and what went right for the Gators. At some point, we're going to snapped the losing streak and today was obviously the day we did it. We had some really good approaches at the plate. We went the other way I think four times in one inning. Guys had some really good approaches. We were trying to push the issue a little bit offensively. We put a couple double steals on, a couple hit and runs and try to force the issue. But yeah, it's it's a big win. The Jacksonville Icemen fall to the Gladiators last night 7-4. The Icemen open up the Kelly Cup playoffs on Thursday against the Florida Everblades at home. It's 84 degrees at 1 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 
1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. I was wondering if RJ would play Colin Baton Rouge, Lauren Taylor. I'm not going to lie. I, hey, Stevie Ray Vaughn is never a bad selection. I, I was waiting for some sort of tie-in as we welcome on our next guest. Kind of a mini-series of sorts we're going to be doing here on Helmets and Heels this week as we kick off the 1 o'clock hour. Getting to know some of the potential prospects who could be there at number 17 overall should the Jaguars not trade up or trade back as we have illustrated throughout the duration of today's program. Who better to talk to when it comes to those LSU Tigers who could be on the board than Matt Moscano of ESPN Baton Rouge. He does it all. He hosts their afternoon drive show after further review. He is the master of multimedia production, and he joins us now on the All Pro Roofing Hotline. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, y'all. I'm doing awesome. And uh, Stevie Ray Vaughn over Colin Baton Rouge, 100 times out of 100. Uh, I'm Love Colin Baton Rouge, love Garth, but probably <laughs> the most overdone thing whenever I do a radio <laughs> hit. So, uh, yes, I appreciate the change up. Nailed it. Nailed Shout it. out to uh, producer RJ. Lauren is celebrating if you're not watching us on YouTube right now. Uh, Lauren Matt, let's still owes me push ups, by the way, Lauren Brooks. I haven't forgotten oh. you owe me push ups. No, Matt, you owe me push ups because Focus. Jameis Winston did not start week nine for the Saints, but we didn't have we, the uh, injury part of the bet. Uh,. I just, I, I just thought you were such. Yeah, I thought you were so much more of an ethical person. You had so much more integrity than that. I mean, you can fill your audience in on, on, on that later. I suppose. Yeah, Matt, you better watch out. We're actually at a golf course right now. There's plenty of room. We're at Hidden Hills for the Guggen <laughs> Open. There's plenty of room. Yeah. If we need Lauren to do push-ups and break them out right now, we can certainly film it. I have to do 50 straight in his scenario. I yeah. think he has to do 50 straight yeah. in the scenario. When, mm. I thought we came mm. to the agreement mm. that we were just both going to do them. We'll stitch a TikTok together. We'll yeah. make it happen. Mm. Uh, Matt, but as I alluded to, uh, we have you primarily on to discuss Brian Thomas Jr., but I also think you can't talk about Brian Thomas Jr. without talking about Malik Neighbors. Enlighten us. The wide receiver room, year two under Brian Kelly, where those players were previous in their career, where they find themselves now as projected first-rounders. Yeah, so Malik and Brian Thomas are both Louisiana kids who uh, were, were in the same signing class together. Uh, Malik was from the Lafayette area. Brian Thomas is from Walker, who's just about 15 minutes east of Baton Rouge. Um, and they both came in with tremendous expectation. And it took Brian uh, – the, the best way to describe Brian Thomas, I think, and when, look, guys, when he was coming out of high school, he was high four-star, five-star guy. But he's very quiet. Like he, he didn't go through the whole take your visits, do the hat, commit, decommit thing. He just waited to the very end, made his announcement very subtly, and came to LSU. And I think the way that I would describe Brian Thomas is he was a lion that didn't know he was a lion. And once he once he figured it out and that switch came on and you realize, oh, the dude's six four, two ten and runs a four three, you saw what happened this year. Malik is that alpha. Malik's the guy you go out to practice, and he's the one who will moss a teammate and stand over him and let him know he mossed him. I mean, he is he is that guy. And um, I think every team that's seen the production and then had an opportunity to meet not only Malik but Brian as well, they, they get why you get why both these guys have raced up draft boards. I mean, it's you know, the production is 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 undeniable, but. The personality of these guys and the work ethic is there as well. So both of them are projected top, you know, top round picks. And Matt, I really like Brian Thomas Jr. I've been on that train for a while now, but the, everyone has this one knock against him if they're going to have one, and that is that he only had the one productive season. What say you about that? Well, Ella, so it's so weird because LSU, and it's valid. I, I understand it. Brian was a productive receiver. He just got caught in a log jam at LSU. Whenever you know you, you show up and you have guys like Kayshawn Booty, who uh, obviously Kayshawn's, you know his his career has gone the path not many thought it would, but Kayshawn, and then you had Malik in that same class, and you, it, as odd as it is for LSU, which for a decade was this was this program that all of your you know, your listeners who are Florida fans would know, like LSU's passing game was was a punchline for a decade here, and it was just it was less miles, three yards in a cloud of dust, but. This state produces incredible skill talent. And you've never had, I mean, just look through the history. If it was Josh Reed and Michael Clayton or Odell and Jarvis and Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, 
now Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, all these guys are Louisiana guys. So that's kind of the, I don't even know if it's a knock, it's just the explanation that Brian Thomas was just down the pecking order. It was always in there, but you know he finally had a chance to show it this year. Now, Matt, was there anything on the football field that you felt in those three years increased? Because you just named some of the things, and obviously we could also point to Jaden Daniels and how much more comfortable he got in the LSU offense too. But when you look at he went from 359 to 361 to over 1,100 yards and then two touchdowns, 5 to 17, that's a massive leap. So what what would you say, uh, if anything, on the football field improved the most during those few years? Yeah, he, he led the nation in, in, uh, in touchdown receptions this past year. For Brian, I think so much of it was it was opportunity, but his ability to stretch the field is probably the biggest difference because when you look at a guy that's his size, when when he's six four two ten, I'm actually not sure what he officially weighted at the combine, but he, he's he's a big receiver. I think you would typically think that's a guy that's more of a of a someone that Saints fans would know a Michael Thomas mold, right? A guy that's going to go over the middle and make tough catches, which he can do. But the way that LSU used Brian Thomas was was stretching the field and. His his ability to beat defensive backs over the top was something that I I didn't know that he had and we didn't really see until this year. So that's that's the thing that I think has most NFL teams intrigued with Brian Thomas. Look, guys, when he went to when he went to the combine, I, I thought Brian probably had the most to lose. Meaning, you have such a deep receiver class. I mean, we, we all agree, right? I mean, it's a it's a it's a deep receiver draft class. And if you would have gone to the to the combine, Keon Coleman is probably the best example of this, and didn't run well, you would have fallen down the pecking order. So the fact that Brian Thomas went, validated that speed, I think is the reason why he's, he's solidified. And I think that's the thing we saw develop most this year. And I think it was interesting, Matt. I got a chance to catch up with him. And when I asked him, like, what do you pride yourself in more? Is it you're stretching the field? Is it your size? The fact that you can be that bigger red zone target, even if you're quote unquote undersized compared to some of those other dudes that do it. He said, my speed is like the number one thing that I'm most proud of. And I found that fascinating, number one, because once upon a time, Urban Meyer said, oh, so famously, speed, speed, speed in Jacksonville should be the priority. And secondly, because I didn't come into the combine process saying that that is who he was as a prospect. Yeah. it's And if I the, – look, the sub-4-4 four, four speed is surprised me, but it, it shows up on tape. And if I had told you the thing that maybe was a concern, it, it would have probably been his hands. I You know, I was back – I went back and looked at my uh, my notes from um, from a fall scrimmage we got to watch and last year's um, uh, spring game. And Brian Kelly gives us – it's kind of incredible. I mean, you don't see this often in college. He gives us access. I mean, we, we get to go watch full practices, full contact scrimmages. So there was a, a, a fall scrimmage they had before this past season, and Brian Thomas had about three drops. I mean, goal line drops. And, and – it was one of the things that I was most interested in watching as it developed throughout the year, and there was never a shred of that. It was probably just like a bad, day. It was just a bad day for him. But um, there just there aren't a lot of holes in that game, man. He's got the size, he's got hands, he's got the speed. He's going to make somebody very happy. And the, the other thing too that you always worry about is you're going to take someone in round one. It's like is money going to change somebody, right? Like is you know what are you what are you dealing with personality wise, and. I think when you go back to the recruiting store with Brian, that kind of illustrates who he is. He's he's just not the guy that's going to be super loud, flashy, um, maybe maybe a little atypical for for uh, for NFL wide receivers. But I think that's probably going to going to bode well for Brian Thomas at the next level, and especially for uh, LSU wide receivers. Uh, Matt Muscata is right. our guest. You you can <laughs> find him on Twitter at exactly that. That is his Twitter handle, Matt Muscona at M. M A N M A T T M O S C O N A, and of course he is the host of After After Further Review on ESPN Baton Rouge. Be one of his sixty six thousand followers on X, Matt. Before Lauren gets to ask you about the spring game, because I know she's very excited to hear about what you've seen in Baton Rouge over the last few weeks of spring ball. I wanted to ask you about a couple other prospects who are coming into the NFL draft from Baton Rouge. Uh, first for me is Mason Smith, a polarizing prospect alongside Makai yeah. Wingo. Those two guys, I, I, I could see them both going in the second round I could see them going in the fourth or fifth round and then one more if I may to uh Jordan Jefferson the nose tackle so those three guys along the defensive front yeah so I'll I'll go in that order so Mason Smith is your like boomer bust prospect 
He was a five-star, number one defensive lineman in the country. As a true freshman, played a bunch and was fantastic. Tore his ACL on the first defensive series of his sophomore year, and it, it missed his entire sophomore year, came back this year, and it never really clicked. Uh, I would compare him a lot to Brian Brzee, who the Saints drafted last year. It was a very similar story. Brzee was a five-star, number one prospect coming out of high school, battled injuries, dealt with a family tragedy, and there was really this big question about what version of the player were you going to get. If Mason Smith figures it out to match the physical ability, he, he is he's an all-pro caliber type type talent physically, but we just haven't seen the production consistently. So it's a knock, and that's why he's not going to be a first-round pick. Makai Wingo transferred in from Missouri after one year, and he's a – He's a really impressive young guy. I don't know if he can be a three-down lineman in the NFL, but he's a guy that's low to the ground, very strong, can push the pocket. Um, kind of a it's surprising pass rush ability from the interior. And and just something else on, on Makai, he's a guy that missed the final month of the season. He had surgery, came back to play in the bowl game. Uh, in an era where guys choose to opt out, like he came back to play in a bowl game because he wanted to be with his teammates. He wore the number 18 jersey, which is like a, a leadership honor at LSU. So that's that's a that'll be a team captain leader guy. Um, someone will be thrilled to have Makai. And then Jordan Jefferson only spent one year in Baton Rouge. He transferred him from West Virginia. And guys, LSU's defensive line was was poor last year, to put it mildly. Jefferson was by far their best player. Um, I think he wanted to say, let me go from West Virginia into the SEC to challenge my sh- myself to see if I can continue to play at that level. And he was by far LSU's most productive interior player. So, I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a draft analyst or a scout. I don't know where those guys might be, might be taken in the draft. But all three of those guys can play at the next level. But Smith is the one with the gigantic, like, boom potential, if he can ever figure it out, to go with the physical ability. All right, Matt, as Mia alluded to, I want to ask you about the spring game. I also want to ask you about LSU baseball. So I've got several questions for you, and then I'm going to have these ladies uh, say who they think won or lost our bet. We'll get to that in a second. But okay, that's, with, what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for, okay? <laughs> I know, we should have led with that. Uh, let's get it to the quarterback, Garrett M- Nussmeyer. I know he looked really good. Uh, tell me about him and tell me about the offense under Brian Kelly this upcoming season. So the, the strangest thing about LSU's offense is, so you lose your O.C., who was the Broyles finalist. You lose your quarterback, who was the Heisman winner, and you're losing two first-round pick receivers. And everyone thinks they're going to be awesome again, like no drop-off, which is stunning to think of it, but it may actually play out that way. Like, I don't think LSU is going to be the number one offense in the country again. Like, last year they led the country in scoring in total offense. Like, I don't think it's going to be that. But I fully expect they're going to score 30, 35 a game. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer's in his fourth year. He looks awesome. The thing, like Garrett's got all the ability. The, the knock on him has always been decision making. Like he'll he'll put the ball into careless spots. We didn't see any of that this spring. Um, not saying it's not still in there, but uh, but he seems to have unlocked that. They've got tons of receiving talent, and they returned four of their five starters on the offensive line. The guards are both uh, four year starters. The two tackles will probably be first round picks next year with with Will Campbell and Emory Jones. They're Mason Taylor's a junior tight end. Like, the offense is going to be awesome. Um, the real big question on this team is how much better can they get defensively? Like, guys, LSU was 106 in the country in defense last year. They, they scored 45 on the road at Ole Miss and lost. I mean, it's just, it was, you could make the argument literally the worst defense in LSU history. So, I, they're, they're going to score. The offense is going to be one of the best in the country again. They've got talent and ability and all that stuff everywhere. But the real question is just how much better can Blake Baker make this defense? I don't think we got that answer in spring. I think they're going to go hit the portal in the spring period, and we'll see uh, how much better they can be. And I mean, they really don't need to be – I mean, you don't need to go from 106th to, to 6th or 26th, but like – can you be fifty six? You know, what I mean, like, can you just not be? Can you just not be the worst ever? And and if that's the case, they might be good enough to be, you know, a ten and two team and, and make a twelve team playoff. But they just they got a lot to prove on the defensive side. And I just I, I don't know that anybody saw enough defensively this spring to think, yeah, they're they're ready. I'm not saying they won't be by the time they get into and through the season, but it's hard to believe right now. 
Matt, just a quick Jaguar connection. Matt House obviously uh, came to Jacksonville after a uh, right. quite an interesting two years down in Baton Rouge as the defense coordinator. And obviously he's back to being a linebackers coach where he coached Josh Allen at that position at the University of Kentucky. Perhaps that's more of his natural fit. How much of it did you put on him versus just kind of the, the, the cards he was handed and dealt? This is not a cop-out, but I think – Number one, you obviously have to have great talent. And LSU, in particular, in the secondary and a defensive tackle, doesn't look like LSU has looked in the past at those two positions. But that's still no excuse to be 106 in the country. And a lot of that was on House and his inability to to adapt to his personnel. Um, I think Matt's going to. I think Matt is a better fit in the NFL. I, I just think conceptually, some of the things he was trying to do with young players never translated. And he was he was unable to to adjust to fit what they do well. So it Matt, Matt's a good coach. I mean, he was with the Kansas City Chiefs when they won the Super Bowl in 2019. And Tyron Matthews said it's one of the best coaches he's ever been around. The guy knows football. He's a really good coach. I just think it was not a great fit at the time at LSU. Yeah, Matt, final question as far as the baseball is concerned. 3-12 uh, and 12 in conference play, both Florida and LSU were in the College World Series National Championship a season ago, and now both not having great seasons. Florida's just a little bit better than LSU. What are people, are they losing their minds there about baseball? You just trying to jab me in the nose with that one? That's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's yeah no, it's, they, they, look, they lost Paul Skeens, they lost Dylan Cruz, they lost seven players from their everyday lineup, and, and I think everyone expected there would be you know, a, a type of transition this year, um, probably leaning on pitching and defense while the offense struggled to, to catch up as the season went along. But just nothing has gone right for this team. They can't win close games. They've already lost it, lost five games by by their one or two runs in conference play. Um, they're just they're not they're just not good enough. Um, and, and look, the schedule was was unforgiving at the start, where you had states in Florida, Arkansas. Vandy, Tennessee. So it's going to lighten up in the second half, and they might be able to go on a little bit of run. But guys, when you're three and twelve, I mean, what, what it, at, at this point, it's going to take a hell of an effort just to get into the conference tournament. So there's a possibility they can get there because the schedule does lighten up in the second half. But it um, to say that that the result has been surprising would be a, a pretty gross understatement. And Matt, I want to go back just real quick because you were talking about the defensive struggles for LSU last season, and it kind of brought me to because you also mentioned a little bit ago about how players, it goes beyond how they are on the football field and how they react to you know adversity and all of these different situations. So when you look at Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. and – an offense that was very explosive, very high-powered, but then a defense who kind of let them down in a lot of situations. How did those three in certain, in certain moments when they needed to kind of rally past that? Yeah. Well, Jaden's probably the guy that's like, you know, you know there's pitchers on the mound who you can't tell if they're up 10 or down 10? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's Jaden. He's, he's unflappable, and you just never really see him get too high or too low no matter the situation. Um, but I mean, I, and I don't mean to say this just cause I'm on in, in Florida, but guys like the, the biggest moment of the season that you want to prove what Jaden was, look at the Florida game. Uh, the week after he was concussed against Alabama, he came out after having not really practiced all week. And then every time they needed a response, boom, there goes Jaden for an 80 yard touchdown run. Boom. There goes Jaden for a 50 yard run. Boom. There's Brian Thomas deep. I mean, it's just that, that game. I'm sure many of you remember it, but if you want to see those three guys put on that game film and say, well, that's, that's what you're getting with those three if you draft them. Um, they're, they're special. They're, you know, they're going to make NFL teams wherever they go. Um, they're going to make their, their fans really happy, man. Those three are, are some really special that have come through here. Well, we could listen to you for mm-hmm. hours, my friend. Good thing uh, you have a three-hour program where you get to do just that. And I will leave you with this because we could keep okay. it forever, but we obviously have a time limit, and we're so appreciative of the time you've given us. This is from our the 307 on our text line, Design by Lifetime Enclosures. Love Matt. Listen to him almost every day. My two favorite radio shows connecting. What better I love way? It. The bet. We have to finalize oh, the bet. Oh, that's true. We do need to so finalize real quick, the bet. That's at SC true. Media Days a few years ago, Matt and I made a bet, 50 push-ups for the loser. 
that he believed Jameis Winston would be the starting quarterback for the Saints all season long, barring injury. I said, no, he's going to not start all season long because he's going to throw too many interceptions. But we didn't have the injury provision in the bet. Mm -hmm. So I said he will not start week nine for the Saints. (laughs) And he didn't start week nine for the Saints because, I think, was it a concussion, Matt? He had the – The Saints were five and two. (laughs) <laughs> and he tore his ACL against the Bucks. Devin White, Devin White horse collared him, tore his ACL. The Saints were 5-2 and two at Halloween. There is no way Jameis was going to the bench, Brooks. You lost. You were wrong on premise. You don't have to do the push-ups if you don't want to. If you, if you, want, to win, if you want to win on a technicality, you can win on a technicality, Brooks. That's fine. I understand. But you know deep in your heart of hearts what you meant because you thought Jameis wasn't going to play well enough. And the Saints were leading the division. They beat Tampa on on uh, on Halloween. And I can't believe I have to curse Devin White because he's a great LSU Tiger and I love him. But he screwed <laughs> exactly. up a great a potential great team. It's All right. funny, Matt. All right, that's I my final. A, that's my final case. It's funny, Matt, because I had a similar bet with someone before that season too. But mine was that he would throw twenty five or more interceptions, and then that didn't happen because he also got hurt. <laughs> so I had like the same kind of weird thing where I was like, "Wait, this doesn't count." <laughs> Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to say, Matt. Oh, I'm going to say, Matt, is that Lauren did indeed lose the bet because now Derek Carr is the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, her least favorite no. person on the face of the earth. That means I lost because I got to watch Derek Carr quarterback my favorite team. That's you're, true. You're I, you know what? I will do the push-ups. Uh, I just have to get ready for them. Uh, I worked out this morning, so I'm not doing it today. But I will do them at some point, Matt, and I'll tag you on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks, y'all. Right, Absolute legend. Uh, I can't encourage you to go check out um, their social media and YouTube channel in particular out enough. Again, it's ESPN 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. He is Matt Moscona. Um, they have sub channels for their Saints and LSU coverage that is just off the charts and may or may not be an inspiration for how 1010 does YouTube and multimedia in the coming months. All right, when we come back, we'll get it to Florida football. Nick De La Torre joins us, senior writer at Gators Online. He was there in Gainesville, of course, for the Orange and Blue game, so we will get his thoughts right here on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Helmets and Heels is brightened by First Coast Lighting and Fans. Upscale lighting, fans, and home decor. On 1010XL. They came together as a team. Joe Cowart. Are you like me? Matt Hayes. Let's keep this between us. And Leon Searcy. Bring it in. XL Prime Time. Call for one one for all. Yeah. <laughs> Two to four weekdays on 1010XL. Clearwater. John, I can't even mow my side yard. It's so soggy. Man, my builder sucks. Brent, calm down. This is a common problem in neighborhoods where houses are built too close together. You need gutters and a properly installed French drain that will soak up subsurface water. We can completely dry it up. So I can take my builder off my speed dial now, huh? Yeah, we got you, buddy. Let that builder bitterness go. Clear water irrigation and drainage too. Mia here and we've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino? canceled because real life came calling my bookies new and improved online casino is here to change the game dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots progressive jackpots and live dealer action all from the comfort of your own home the live casino is so easy to use just go to my bookie and click live casino at the top you'll find live dealers ready to deal or spin just like you're at the casino The MyBookie Casino provides a Las Vegas experience when the action's in the palm of your hands and you don't even need to wear pants. Start at MyBookie today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code 1010XL. A revamped loyalty program ensures a host of exclusive VIP perks. Sign up and hit the casino with promo code 1010XL. The more you play, the more you win, only with MyBookie. Make sure your roof is ready for the next Florida storm by scheduling a complimentary roof inspection with Universal Roof and Contract. And right now, get $200 off your roof repair and $500 off a roof replacement, plus no interest for one year. This offer expires April 30th and restrictions apply. Ensure peace of mind before the next storm hits with Universal Roof and Contracting. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. Universal Roof. Hey, it's Carline here. Tired of missing out on the conversation due to hearing loss? At Jacksonville Hearing and Balance, their team of audiologists led by Dr. Douglas Green can help you rediscover the joy of connection. Visit jhbi.org today. 
Certainly facing challenging economic times. I can't speak for all of us. But for me, comforting to know my money is in good hands with ITP Partners. Take it here for ITP Partners. Jacksonville guys, taking care of my Jacksonville money. I'll admit it, I don't understand a ton about the economy. Higher interest rates, 401ks. What I do know is I move closer to retirement. I continue to watch my money grow. Thanks to Chris Bryan, Jeff Hartman, Reagan Wright, Dan Abel, and Reed Wingate. Get in the game, guys. ITP Partners, always there to help. For more info, Chris at ITPPartners.com or call 904-312-9751. Add an ace to your Tuesday morning. The third ace in four days. Brunch with a tour. Tour news, tips, and inside info. Brought to you by Clearwater Irrigation and art of natural stone 8 30 tuesday morning on 1010 xl our slogan know before you blow applies to more than just dui cases hi i'm attorney lee lockett of lockett law battery charges can result in jail time and criminal convictions too so know before you blow a gasket and hit a loved one or a stranger drug crimes like possession of marijuana and cocaine will land you in cuffs too so know before you blow in a boating under the influence case you also have the option to blow or not to blow so know your options. Know before you blow. Go to knowbeforeyoublow.com now. Offices Jacksonville. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist is now offering ortho walk-in appointments. If you have an immediate need for orthopedic care, contact Southeast Orthopedic Specialist immediately. Avoid ERs and urgent care waiting rooms. For more information, go to se-ortho.com. Relieve pain and get back to life. SOS. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. At Duck Duck Rooter, we understand plumbing issues can be a real inconvenience for your building or business, and we're here to help. We can handle all kinds of plumbing jobs, including broken pipes, clogged drains, line jetting, installing water heaters, and full repipes. Need a camera inspection or a smoke test? Yes, Duck Duck Rooter does that too. Plus, our lift station services include inspections, monitoring, cleaning, and repairs. When you're stuck, call the Duck. 904 862 6769. That's 904 862 6769. Elevate your party game to the next level with Mystic Cornhole Company. Visit their showroom now on the corner of Hogan and Parental Home Road. It's your one-stop destination for all things cornhole. MysticCornhole.com. Andrew Gibson here, sports fans, and the next time you're driving by Kuhn Flowers on Beach Boulevard, why not stop in and smell the roses? Kuhn Flowers has totally changed the face of their store inside and out. Send someone you love a floral arrangement today from Kuhn Flowers. Need or want cash? Beach's Jewelry and Pawn has cash available. Ready to buy. Guitars, surfboards, jewelry, firearms, tools, and especially gold. They need it all. Selling or pawning. Get cash on the spot at Beach's Jewelry and Pawn in Jacksonville Beach. Hey folks, Mike Dempsey here. You've heard me talking about Hello Windows and Doors. And with great ratings and expert reviews, you know they're high quality and energy energy efficient products. So what's your next step? How about scheduling a free consultation or just stop by the Pella showroom right there on Phillips Highway next to Tesla? Pella's professional consultants will guide you through your entire project from start to finish. From simple projects to complex renovations, their team has the experience needed to make your project a success. And that's the quality and service you can expect from Pella Windows and Doors. Let's go! Looking for a night of action without a big hit to your bankroll? This Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena cheer on your sharks as they go all in against the Las Vegas Nighthawks. See what I did there? With tickets as low as $15, you can't find this kind of family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904 621 0700 or visit jacksharks.com. Let's go! Decades night. Find that old members only jacket or favorite flannel shirt. We're celebrating the 90s. What's your favorite decade? Let's Go! Don't miss the fun this Saturday, April 20th at 7 o'clock in the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena. For tickets, call 904-621-0700 or visit jacksharks.com. That's tickets at 904-621-0700. Let's go! Let's go! Ten XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we threw it to the other team a couple times. We'd like to have those back, but overall, when given opportunity, I thought we took advantage of it. You know, I do think that um, those guys have been awesome. 
I mean, I can't compliment those two guys enough. Billy Napier, the head coach of the Florida Gators, commenting on the play of his not one but two quarterbacks in Graham Mertz and the freshman sensation DJ Lagway. For more on Florida's spring practices and the spring game this past Saturday, Nick De La Tour joining us now on the All-Pro Roofing Hotline. You can find him on X at De La Tour. And, of course, he is the senior writer for Gators Online and on 3 Sports. And before I begin, Nick, first and foremost, Mazel Tov on the upcoming – young child that will be joining your family. <laughs> Lauren Brooks was very quick to point out to me last week when I said, let's make sure we get Nick on on Monday, um, that you will be having a football baby, you and your wife, which uh, <laughs> God bless you for uh, for the timing of that one. Yeah, yeah, great timing on my end. Um, week three of football <laughs> season with, uh, with a newborn on the way. Uh, so I've never been good at math. Definitely did not uh, count out those months. Will the Gators be 3-0 and at that time? That remains to be seen. Let's not put the cart before the horse, Nick, and let's begin with what you saw on Saturday at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Yeah, I think I left this um, this spring game probably feeling better than I did last spring game, um, that 10-7 one. I think Florida, for the most part, put on a, a good show. You know, as the spring game goes, you can script it the same way that WWE scripts WrestleMania, and if you want something to come across, you can – make sure that happens, and that does. So I think what they did was they showed the future with D.J. Lagway. They let him play. Uh, they let him run around a little bit, throw the football. Um, but I also saw better tackling. I saw the secondary, um, which I think struggled a little bit last year. I, I think you saw Ace Turner, D.J. Douglas, um, Traquez Bridges, the three additions to the transfer portal that they showed up uh, in, in the impact that they've made. Um, and, and overall, I think you leave this spring game um, healthy. No one got hurt during the game. Uh, and, and a little more confident uh, about the team if you're a fan than you did probably going into into the spring. Yeah, Nick, from being there live, to me, Jaden Baugh jumped off the page and everyone was checking their rosters to see who exactly is this guy. Uh though he was just a three-star, once you did more research, you realize he played several different positions in high school, played both ways, and he's a pure athlete. Yeah, I think uh, Billy Napier, the first time he went to uh, Columbia High School, asked about him and thought he was just a linebacker. Jaden made it clear that he wanted to run the football. Um, it, it, it was really interesting to watch him run because he's six foot, six foot one, uh, 238 pounds, and um, doesn't look that way when he's running the ball. I thought he had some shiftiness, some wiggle in the backfield, and um, but not to the point where you're accusing him of dancing. Uh, he does get north and south. I think uh, as every young freshman, you probably look at them and you think, uh, man, I'd like you to be able to block, pass block a little bit better. Um, but certainly him and KD Daniels, uh, along with Tram Webb and Montreal Johnson, I think they're going to make people in Gainesville forget about Trevor Etienne until uh, that one weekend <laughs> in Jacksonville. <laughs> Nick, it seemed like a lot of the chatter coming out of this weekend was defensively and just the, the technique and tackling, kind of some of that fundamental stuff that maybe was missing or they struggled with last year. What were your thoughts on that defensively and what you saw from that side of things? Yeah, I think they, they put a lot. I talked to Will Harris. Um, it was, uh, I think, before even signing day. And I asked him, it was right when he took the job, the secondary coach, asked him what he thought about the team. He said, well, I haven't really had a chance to to watch them yet. I have my iPad packed up. I'm about to fly back to California to get my stuff and to move here. Um, and then I hadn't talked to him again, but I saw all of the offers going out to the, the guys in the transfer portal, portal, and I thought, yeah, he must have watched those cut-ups and, and saw that Florida's uh, tackling was not up to par. So I think <laughs> Will Harris in the secondary – uh, and then Ron Roberts, who came over from Auburn, um, have made an, an emphasis on tackling. And Ron said, you have to be excellent at ta tackling. You can't just be good or okay. You have to be excellent. So um, it's hard to practice it. Um, you don't have any two-a-days anymore. You're not really tackling full to the ground. Uh, you can tackle those you know, foam donuts that you roll around as much as you want, but it's a lot different tackling a foam donut and tackling Jaden Ball, for instance. So... I think Florida's done what they could uh, in terms of doing live tackling. Uh, Will Harris runs his group 
through live tackling drills before every practice where uh, he's one of the guys being tackled, holding a pad. So I think Florida has, you know, clearly made it a point of emphasis this spring to be better tacklers. Uh, it, it's difficult to really truly practice it, but I think they've gotten uh, found some creative ways to do that safely during spring. A couple more for Nick De La Tour on the All Pro Roofing Hotline. Nick Lauren says she believes there will be a package for DJ Lagway this fall akin to maybe what we saw with Anthony Richardson in the early parts of his freshman year, certainly what we saw from Cam Newton in his season in Gainesville. What say you? Yeah, there's, I mean, in, in this day and age, there's no sense in redshirting D.J. Lagway. If D.J. Lagway is the player we expect him to be, he won't be in college for four years. If he's not the player we expect him to be, he'll probably be in the transfer portal and go somewhere else to play. Um, at some point in his career. So there's no sense in my mind of redshirting DJ Lagway. He can help you now. Um, I looked it up this morning. Tim Tebow only threw 33 passes his freshman year, um, when he, but he played in nearly every game. And I think DJ Lagway, you need to find um, interesting ways to get him involved. And I think he has shown enough in the spring game throwing the ball. He's shown enough certainly in high school winning every award that a college or the high school quarterback can win, that he can throw the ball. So even if you're bringing him in just to add something to the running game, I think there's enough there that defenses have to respect his arm and and, uh, and play on it. So, yeah, to me, you have to find a way. that It, it falls on Billy Napier, Russ Calloway, Ryan O'Hara to find out exactly how we can use DJ because there's no – mistake about it. Uh, they're probably running two different uh, quarterback meetings. You have Graham Mertz, who will be 24 years old in December, and in his final season, who uh, his second season of the offense, and then DJ Lagway, who uh, I think Willis still hasn't had prom yet. So you've got two <laughs> different kind of, you have two different kind of uh, quarterbacks in terms of their understanding of the offense, but uh, there's no denying DJ's uh, athletic ability. So, yeah, I think you have to get DJ into the mix somehow. Nick, from what I can tell, you're a big fan of punters. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what did you think about seeing Tommy Townsend out there? Uh, That's his guy. That yeah. his good friend. Out there in the no-shirt, orange and blue overalls. Yeah, I didn't know what to call those. Uh, overalls, <laughs> uh, an overall onesie. It, it looks... Uh, <laughs> It looks comfortable. Uh, Johnny has always been fashion forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tommy uh, following suit with the long hair. Great to see the Townsend brothers back um, and and supporting, you know, Johnny's foundation, which does so much um, great stuff to raise money for the pediatric cancer ward here at Chance. Yeah, in case people missed it, when you're at the game, uh, they had both the Townsend brothers come on and do a punting <laughs> challenge. Oh, and fun. before that had happened, I we were sitting, my parents and I were sitting, Nick, on the sideline about 10 rows up from the orange side. And I see Townsend walk, jo- Tommy Townsend walking by. I didn't see Johnny at that point. And I was like, oh, mom, there's Tommy Townsend. She's like, that's a punter? Like, because he's jacked, <laughs> right? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's a punter. Uh, but, yeah. All right, Nick, thank you so very much for joining us. And we will be sure to check in with you throughout the season, maybe not during the birth uh, week of your son or daughter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks, you too. Again, you can find him at De La Tour on X. And, of course, he also has everything Florida Gators baseball on lock, although uh, not really sure if fans want to be uh, looking into that well, at Florida the current juncture, Well, Florida won yesterday, Mia, but yeah. uh, that was after losing Friday and Saturday yes. to South Carolina. The pitching uh, woes continue. We'll get to that in here just uh, right here to just a little bit. When we come back, though, Taylor has an Iceman update for you as the Iceman make the playoff push right here on Tension XL 92.5 FM. Helmets and heels from the First Coast Lighting Studios at 1010XL. May I have your attention, please? Get ready for 1010XL's new primetime lineup. Start the day with Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Dempsey and Fat Tony take you to noon. It's the ladies of helmets and heels until 2. XL primetime follows at 4. Franchi and Carline drive you home. Then Baloo and Hacker take you into the night. It's showtime! Does the building you go to work in every day need a little love and attention? Jason Parker here with Performance Painting. Great companies take great care of the buildings their staff and customers walk into every day. 
If the building you're in doesn't match the vision you have for your company, we can help. Go to performance-painting.com. Our highly trained team makes the difference. Quality coatings applied with pride. Performance Painting! Best Bet is number one. That's right, Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park, and St. Augustine have one card poker. The fastest and easiest card game to learn and play. Play one card at a time, and the highest card wins even money. If the card values are the same, it's time for war. Just like the game you remember. You must be 18 years or older to play. More at bestbetjacks.com. That's bestbetjacks.com. Hey, it's Matt Hayes. 100% risk-free with Awaken 180. No subscriptions, no hidden fees, just a proven plan to lose weight. I did it, Dempsey did it, and now Hackers transforming right in front of our very eyes. Results at awaken180weightloss.com. Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute is the sports medicine leader in Northeast Florida. We're proud to be the official sports medicine provider for your hometown teams, including the Jaguars, Sharks, Axemen, and the Jumbo Shrimp. We have the most cutting-edge resources for sports medicine care, including active armor casting, Alter-G anti-gravity treadmills, and highly trained physicians and athletic trainers. JOI is truly where the pros go, and so should you. It's tune-up time, and Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, wants to partner with you for a cool summer season. Tune up your AC unit right now so it's running at peak performance when you need it most. Just call 777-4300 and order a tune-up for just 59 bucks. Keep your unit humming at optimal level. Log on to FloridaHomeAC.com and take advantage of their savings. Keep cool with Florida Home AC. That's 777-4300. Who are the top prospects? These kids can play ball. And you know what? 1010XL's draft previews are brought to you by Big Brothers Big Sisters of Northeast Florida. That's the foundation of this team. Listen for draft previews. Are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? The answer next. We all know that saving money on items like homeowners insurance can be done. Ask your agent about the new Southern Oak Insurance deductible options. It'll save money for you. Our family protecting yours, Southern Oak Insurance. Although classified as a vegetable by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, tomatoes are actually a fruit since they're technically berries that develop from a single flower. Southern Oak Insurance, our family protecting yours. Hey guys, Hicken here. It's April, spring has sprung. It's a great time to get that house painted for the summer. Stop paying for exterior paint that doesn't protect your home or business. Rhino Shield's beautifully durable coatings never ship crack or peel. 25-year warranty to back that up. No mold, mildew, and algae. Water intrusion? Forget about it. Fight salt corrosion has a Class A fire rating. All while saving you thousands. Right now, 0% financing. New low pricing up to 25% off. Book your free estimate today at rhinoshieldjacks.com. Have you tried golfing at the improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Tap House. Now, go to the website, that is CimarronGolfClub.com, and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program, and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. Tired of changing out bad sod year after year? Get it done right with Roundtree Sod. Big or small, they have it, and always supplied farm fresh. For a lush, legendary green lawn, call 7414-SOD for a free estimate. 7414-SOD. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Wilson for a watermelon moonshine on this Monday. We are live at Hidden Hills Coastal Equipment Guggen Open. Seems like everybody's having an absolute blast out there. Speaking of having a blast, Taylor, you went to the Iceman game. What was that, Friday night? Friday night, yes. And they won. They did win. It was an overtime win. So much fun. It was 3-2 with, uh, I want to say, like three minutes-ish left. 
uh, in the third period. They ended up tying it 3-3 and then scored pretty quickly in overtime, so that was fun. And obviously, if you haven't been to the, – the overtime hockey is three-on-three, three, so it's so fast and it's, it's, it's intense from, like, the second the puck drops. But so now, um, unfortunately, though, they ended up – so they had a – that was an overtime win on Friday and overtime loss on Saturday and then a loss yesterday. Dang. But they notched three points between Friday and Saturday because of that. So they technically just needed a win or an overtime win on Sunday to be able to clinch the number one spot. Fortunately, it was a loss. So uh, Greenville, who's been pretty much ahead the whole time, took the the one seed for the South. And so now the Icemen will play the Everblades, who I hate the Everblades. They've knocked them out of the playoffs the last two Mm -hmm. seasons. But there is a little – I was talking to one of the guys. He was from the Icemen sitting over there kind of passing out um, some stuff to some of the Googans golfing. And I was talking to him a little bit about it. And I was like, how are they feeling? Because both years they've gotten knocked out. Two years ago, Everblades were the higher seed and knocked them out. But last year, Jacksonville was a higher seed, and they still got knocked out by the Everblades. Um, and they're just that, like, they're the just thorn like they, in their side. Yes, every year. So um, he said they're fired up, though, because they were really – they were not happy last year after getting knocked out. Um, they did just get some of their guys back down from the AHL, too, so that should help them out. Uh, but the Icemen still get the number two seed, so they do have home ice nice. uh, against the Everblades. So that starts Thursday at 7 p.m. is game one. Sunday at 3 p.m. is game two here in Jacksonville. And then they'll hit the road uh, for three games if needed. Uh, and then they'll be back if needed uh, for their final two games for this series. So it, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be intense because, again, there's just that little – extra rivalry between the Florida Everblades and the Icemen. I'm trying to think, what's the all-time series? between? I mean, all-time, I'm sure it favors the Everblades, but I feel like regular season this year, I feel like the Icemen got the better of them at least a handful of times. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look, but they definitely, I mean, the Icemen have been playing, especially since December, have been hot. But unfortunately, Greenville just stayed hot, too, so they right. never had that chance to, like, get ahead. As soon as they, uh, the Icemen would win 6-7 straight, then so would Greenville. Uh, Looks but like the, 24. Everblades have won 24 times Iceman have won 25 times yeah I was gonna Overall. say I thought yeah, it was pretty tight incredibly close yeah. So yeah that'll be fun to monitor Jacksonville Iceman.com is where people can go to get tickets like you said uh, Thursday night puck drops at seven o'clock Sunday three o'clock as far as the jumbo shrimp are concerned they split with Charlotte last week the next six game home series begins tomorrow morning at 11.05 for education day back to back weeks Ties. of Iceman at home I can't I read the Iceman excuse me yes. the shrimp at home I, yeah. I didn't expect I love that, that. And I, this early yeah, yeah. And well, they started too. on the road at Durham, and so then home against Charlotte, right. now uh-huh. home again against Norfolk Tides. Uh, like I said, first pitch tomorrow for Education Day, 11.05. Uh, just quickly want to mention no alcohol is allowed for that game, so just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and then when it comes to FSU, baseball improved to 30-5. and five. FSU now number five in the Baseball America rankings, eighth in D1 baseball rankings. Swept Miami over the weekend. And, ladies, I'll give you a, a saucy nug when it comes to FSU. The Knolls beat Miami in football, basketball, and baseball this past calendar year. Also, the Knolls won, of course, the state championship in baseball because they beat both. They swept Miami and they swept Florida. That's their first season sweep against the rival Florida and Miami since 1960. Wow. Saucy nugs. Yeah, there you go. First time since 1960 for FSU. So they're very happy, obviously, with Link Jarrett. A lot of people are saying there's a parallel between Mike Norvell at FSU and Link Jarrett at Mm -hmm. FSU. Mike Norvell, first couple seasons, not great, but then drastically improved through the transfer portal. Link Jarrett is doing the same thing when it comes to baseball. Like we mentioned, Florida lost two out of three to South Carolina. Florida is now 18 and 17 overall. Florida allowed, this is the pitching uh, woes, like I mentioned, allowed 10 runs Friday. Nine runs Saturday, and then in yesterday's victory, allowed nine runs as well. That one uh, was way too close for comfort. But the big news, Jack Caglione hit his 20th home run of the season. He He also pitched yesterday. Yeah, five innings pitched, three earned runs. His season ERA right now at 3.89. And then locally, Florida plays host to JU tomorrow night, 6.30 first pitch. Uh, JU did lose two out of three at Austin P. Like I mentioned, they're uh, at Florida tomorrow night. The River City Rumble is this weekend, so make sure you head to JU as JU plays host to UNF. First pitch beginning Friday at 7 p.m. And then finally, when it comes to UNF, UNF lost two out of three at home to Lipscomb, but UNF is at UCF tomorrow night, first pitch, 6 o'clock. I, I want to mention really quick because yeah. just there's this water, like a water fountain thing down there. A water fountain thing? Yeah. At, Hidden Hill, like, at Hidden Hills? <laughs> it's not technically a water fountain. It's more oh, of like for a – bottled water. Yeah, well, right? it, it's almost like if you go to get like a fountain drink at a 
Uh, like okay. so it looks like that it looks like a fountain drink thing but there's only one option and it's water or two water and ice <coughs> anyways i felt very silly because i could not figure out how to get the thing to work over there and so like i'm messing with, with it for a while eventually got it to work but i've watched like 12 people go up and also struggle getting this water out of this thing so i'm glad i'm not alone and just now there was three guys surrounded and they're all like <laughs> waving their hands in front of it trying to get the water oh, out so it's fantastic. not just me that it's no, not just me it is not just you and that is going to do it for us here live at the Coastal Equipment Guggen Open at Hidden Hills. Uh, Mia, have fun tonight with Caitlin Clark. 7 o'clock, baby. Most watched, anticipated NBA, WNBA draft of recent history, even though we all know what the outcome will be. That's correct. Maybe she'll fall to three. Chicago. <laughs> Did you see Chicago. the Indiana Fever literally tweeted out, 22 hours to go. <laughs> Not 24, 22 hours to go. Say I no love more. It. Great job, RJ Saunders back at Tenton XL. Headquarters for Mia O'Brien, for Taylor Dahl, I'm Lauren Brooks. These heels are made for Tucker. We will talk to you tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. XL Primetime is next. You keep saying when you ought to be a change. You're listening to Helmets and Heels.